Peggy 12. So, there we are. Our first segment of Capcom TGS Live 2020 is Street Fighter V Champion Edition, which is the headline game for the ongoing Capcom Pro Tour 2020. Here to tell us more about it are Street Fighter V series producer Shuhei Matsumoto and director Takayuki Nakayama. Hi, I am the producer for Street Fighter V. I am Matsumoto. I am the Street Fighter V series director, Nakayama. Nice to meet you. Hi, Mr. Matsumoto. Hi, Mr. Nakayama. It's a pleasure to see you. So, let's kick off Capcom TGS 2020 Live with you. Um, what sort of information do you have to share with us today? So, today I'll be focusing on the summer update um, and one of the new characters who are coming to the game. We're going to be talking about Dan. I see. There were a lot of new, exciting new characters announced in that recent summer update, weren't there? Dan's a character who will be familiar to Street Fighter fans, and I'm sure they can't wait to hear more. So, now what I'd like to discuss first. We'll start with an overview of what Street Fighter V Champion Edition has to offer. So Street Fighter V Champion Edition is a bundle of the game that includes a lot of the content that was added into Season 4. Uh, but it's not limited to just 40 characters and 34 stages and over 200 alternative costumes. It's got an incredible amount of content. And it's got over 2,000 DLC, total of them added to the game. So there's all sorts of stuff for you to see. Wow, they're kind of how much stuff that is. So, uh, if you don't already own Street Fighter V, this is sounds like a great place to jump in. So if you don't have Street Fighter V yet, you definitely should go for a Street Fighter V Champion Edition. And if you already have the Space Game or the Arcade Edition, we recommend the Street Fighter V Champion Edition Upgrade Kit. It is definitely the thing to buy. So, additionally, on PlayStation 4, uh, the Champion Edition Upgrade Kit is currently on sale, and you can buy it in Japan for 25% off through October 6th. For those of you who have been on the fence, this sale is definitely the time to pick up a copy. So, there's also PlayStation Plus, Sony Interactive Entertainment Subscription Service. It offers premium perks at a flat rate. Now, one of those perks is the ability to play popular games at no extra charge. Since September 1st, Street Fighter V has been added to that roster, which is a great way to try it out. Remember, you have 10 days left to redeem it if you haven't, so make sure you hurry up and grab it. So, ever since Street Fight Fighter V was added to the PS Plus free play, we've seen a truly surprising surge in players. If you're if you're thinking of starting, uh, in addition to single player, now is a great time to jump online and uh, find opponents to fight. I'm sure there's going to be lots around for you to challenge. So it'd be great to download it and give it a try. Uh, additionally, free play was really, really well received. So we decided to add some additional characters for a limited time. You can see the characters on stage right now. Currently, we have Akuma, Colin, Ed, Abigail, Menet, and Zeku. Um, so, six characters that are going to be available into September 30th at about 6 p.m. Japan time. We also have some characters from Season 3 and Season 4 that we're going to be added, adding to free play. So, if you'd like to find out more information, please keep an eye on our official Twitter. For players who've been wanting to try out these characters, now is your chance. So, with the game entering its fifth and final season, 
So, what was the reaction from players when you announced it? So, during the recent summer update live stream, we announced the season 5 characters and we laid out our roadmap for the future. We showed off things that we hadn't really done much in Street Fighter V until now. Uh, when we were doing that, it sounds like we had uh, about 100,000 people simultaneously watching in real time. And we were really, really happy to see all those people and see how many players were surprised and excited by the information we had. So, um, next, what can you say is the underlying concept for Season 5? Now, I'd say Season 5 is about uh, maturation and also new sensations. Now, that sound might sound a little bit paradoxical. They sound like conflicting concepts. But as Street Fighter V turns five years old, the game is in a very refined place thanks to the efforts of its development team and all of its players' wonderful support. So as the game is maturing going into Season 5, the game has got a lot of you know, enjoyment to it. It's got a lot of depth regardless of whether you're playing it or watching it. And the team is working hard to add new characters and concept systems to make it even more fun. Well, it's going to be fun to see all those new things added to the game, won't it be? Yeah. So, speaking of the summer update from August, we know you announced four characters, right? So, it's the fifth season of Street Fighter V, so uh, we had our plans to add five characters. But in the recent summer update, we only revealed four. Dan, Rose, Oro, and uh, Akira Kazima from the Rival School series. So the first one we plan to release during the upcoming 2020-2021 winter season is Dan. So, what made you decide to go with these particular four characters? So, a lot of characters were brought up as potential characters. There's a lot of really cool characters in our series. Uh, but we ended up settling on the first three because they were very distinct. And then we wanted to add Akira as a quest guest character from franchise has been a bit dormant for a while. So Dan's fighting style mixes in ta taunts and is a very uh, characteristic of him. We also have uh, Menet, who is a kind of apprentice of Rose uh, and uses soul power in very interesting ways. We also have like Oro, um, we wanted to add because he's got these cool psychic powers that allow him to make objects like rocks and so on float. Then we have, finally we have Akira, um, Kazama Akira, who uses moves based on Chinese martial arts. And we want to do our best to kind of recreate how she feels to play in her native game. So we're you know, doing our best to deliver all of that to you. So it sounds really exciting. I want to know who the last character is. Can you tell us? <laughs> Sorry, who is it indeed? We hope everyone's looking forward to the final character reveal. So Street Fighter V is uh, in its fifth year since its release in 2016. How do you feel looking back? Oh wow, here's some information on the screen for you. You couldn't see this information on the screen. So with all that we put into this game, it really feels kind of uh, historic. We think it feels quite historic. We've been able to add tons of uh, new interesting content to the game over its lifetime, like uh, new battle mechanics and characters and costumes. And because of that, it's brought a lot of really different ways uh, to enjoy the game, and it's been really nice seeing the joy it's brought to the players. Um, so it's kind of all worth it. So, in addition to the 16 characters that we launched with, you know, having more and more oh, 16 characters that we had before, adding more characters is really, you know, a whole big lineup. And, you know, looking back, uh, during Season 4, we had two boss characters, Gil and Seth. And I think some players wondered if that would be the end of it. But, uh, you know, Dan is a really prop popular character with not just... Uh, players, but with the developer team. So we were really excited to work on him. We wanted to include him, definitely. 
So, you know, thinking back on Street Fighter V's history, it had a lot of really cool promotions and collaborations, right? Is there anything that stands out as a particularly memorable um, one to the two of you? So, Matsumoto is adding, uh, one time we were able to collaborate with Onitsuka Tiger uh, to produce and sell original Street Fighter shoes. It was a Chun-Li set of shoes. It had a... It had um, Mas Masakazu Katsura, a manga artist, who drew a Chunli artwork for the shoe itself. And for us, like it was a really memorable collaboration. It kind of felt like a dream. And the shoe that they sold in real life, you can actually we added it to the game as a original costume, so you can see it in both real life and on the digital screen. And I think that's a really cool thing that we were able to do. Mm. Yeah, I really think those shoes, like, they were just fit her so I think yeah, really cool. Oh, you know, we also had a collaboration with Paki. Uh, it's uh, Glico is the company that makes hockey, you know, those delicious little snack sticks. And uh, they released overseas something called a Pocky KO. And so if you've ever seen like a Pocky, it's got the chocolate in the biscuit. And the Pocky KO, it refers to getting a KO uh, when the player's health bar has the same ratio as a Pocky stick. Uh, we also had some really interesting things. We had some illustrations on those Pocky pass, uh, packages where you and chun -Li are on it as well. So, so during this, uh, you know, on this kind of picture of Chu, Ryu and Chun-Li eating Paki on the package of the Paki packs, uh, it was a really nice chance to see kind of like Chun-Li and Ryu just kind of hanging out and relaxing and, you know, having a nice time. You don't really often see how you know, close they are and how much they can chill out. I mean, you never see them eating like candy, right? They're always punching people and so on. So I'm looking forward to seeing what other promotions and collaborations are to come. Now let's go over the new info you have to share about Season 5. Uh, do you have something, would you like to begin? So uh, let's start by introducing our first new character for Season 5. I want to take a deep look at Dan. So Dan is... Uh, you can see him on the screen over here. He is a fighter who uses the Psycho style. Um, he thinks of himself as the ultimate uh, martial artist. Um, he's brimming with confidence, he's a crafty fighter, and he taunts his opponents to rile them up. He's a... Uh, yeah, he's a really kind of sneaky and intelligent fighter. So in this game, Dan is also globally famous, actually. His moves are really cool, right? And because that, he works as an instructor of the Psycho style, which he claims is invincible. He's uh, fighting once more to attract more pupils to join his dojo. So, so I understand that Dan is going to be in Street Fighter V, but what aspects about him will change and what will stay the same in this update? So Dan first appeared in Street Fighter Alpha, and his and you at that point his entire concept was like really quite wild, right? I mean, you can kind of see him on the screen right now. You know, there previously wasn't a character whose selling point was that they were genuinely week. Um, so it's interesting to see, you know, like, just see this character, like, not really strong, but still up there. You know, and at the same time that we released him, there was another character called Akuma, um, who is known, you know, to be an incredibly powerful fighter. And so, you know, if you're players and you're playing as Akuma and you lose to Dan, it was really funny to see people being like, oh my god, I can't believe Dan beat Akuma. That's absolutely embarrassing. So, Dan also showed up in Street Fighter 4. Uh, his EX Danku Kyaku was a really strong attack. And his playstyle worked really well with the focus attack system from that game. 
You know, he wasn't really that great. He was like middling capabilities overall, but it was an interesting character because of this, who could put up a decent fight. So for Street Fighter V, we've retrained the good points that made him entertaining while making his uh, chants and some of these other things, uh, which didn't have many uses, viable in fights. So we think he's kind of like got a new coat of paint and he's a new fun character to play. Mm. It's kind of really funny, like these like weak characteristics and how like these useless taunts. Uh, it must be really fun in-game. Now, I get the impression that Dan's unique actions have been popular with players. How are they in this game? So, uh, we actually brought a clip today that demonstrates how Dan's distinct moves and taunts from previ previous games were brought into Street Fighter V. Uh, if you could take a look at it, uh, we think you'd really enjoy it. So, talking about his normal attacks first, uh, well, actually, we got his normal attacks and some ultimate attacks and some throws and dashes and stuff. So, now we're showing some of his basic normal attacks. Um, you know, they, they aim for nice spots. They got really good oomph and they feel great. You know, for a strong punch, he also steps forward slightly when he does it. Now, next, you can see this kind of fun little thing. Uh, after he shoots off an attack, there's kind of like a very Dan-esque visual that happens after that. It's kind of just like a very damn thing. Now, for his unit attack, he's got a like, cool kick like you just saw, which uh, you know knocks people around, and a middle attack that that is actually surprisingly quickly and you know, manages to hit pretty powerful. He's got some really aggressive attacks as well. It might be best to play him in a really fun, aggressive way. Yeah. His throws and all of his moves kind of just scream Dan is what we are trying to go for. Next, we're going to talk about his special moves. So we've got some of the specials that should look familiar to you. First up is his Garo Ken. He doesn't, you know, doesn't really get that far. So now we've actually added like a way to delay it to uh, to by by holding the punch button. This also extends how far it'll go. So it's a very useful tool. Now we also have uh, the Dan. This up uh, the Donetskin, I think. He's actually got, you know, like... Oh, sorry, this is the Donetskin. This is something from uh, the Ultra Street Fighter IV Omega Edition. It can be linked to some of the other attacks that we showed before to uh, lock your opponent and you know, give them nice little combos. Uh, and next up, we have the V skills to talk about. So a lot of people uh, know about V-Skills. There are two types of V-Skills in this game. For Dan, both of them are actually taunts. So I'm going to show you a little bit of how one of them works. So this is actually not just in taunting account. It also can cancel special moves when it's executed. The other taunt, uh, can we can't show you just yet, but it can cancel normal moves when they hit. So, it's a pretty technical move. Next, we're going to talk about his basic combos. I'm punching this guy really nicely. So you can see these are some of the attacks that we showed you before. It's uh, really good to string together some cool combos with specials and other attacks. Uh, this is something we haven't talked about just yet. But this is a attack that uses uh, the V trigger. Um, you know, his moves are something that really reward practice, so it's good to get used to it. Next up, we'll talk about his taunts. Now, uh, unlike the V skill, there aren't actually any special effects or functions for the taunt. They're kind of just useless. But they're actually they're, there are actually some executable hidden commands you can look forward to. So, you know, maybe they're not totally useless. Uh, so please take a look at this footage, and once the game is out, you know, play around and see what you can find. Next up, we have another uh, video to you. We think you'll like it. <laughs> so, this is his legendary taunt. So, uh, the combat team couldn't stop laughing while they were uh, making this. 
えただのあの挑発行為だけじゃなくてちょっとこれに仕掛けがしてあって、so, あの最後まで is a really nice thing. It has like a little bit of something.、Uh, if you watch it to the end, something silly might happen. So、uh, it might be hard for fighters to decide whether or not they want to wait to see what he does or to like just go and smack him and tell him to stop. So I hope all our people who are looking forward to trying out all the things that we showed today and all the things that we couldn't. そうですね今回はかなりあのデコ入れもしましたし、so, あのいろいろねあの研究者があるキャラクターが、so, like、said at the beginning,、uh, like there's a lot of really things that <笑>今回は今回 can reward like a lot of it going deep dive into figuring out this character and the more you look into it, the better he will get. So he's got a lot of depth to it. So up until now we've been examining Dan in depth, but I understand you have more to discuss, Mr. Matsumoto. So Uh, actually, the other day we held a costume design contest where we solicited character costume designs from our players, and the costumes voted to be the top two would make it into the actual game. So, for this costume design costume contest, we received a lot of different submissions, over 500, and the other day the finalists were recently selected, and we'd like to show them today. So, our winners for the contest are twofold. We have Jinxy and Gar. You can see them up on the screen right now. The designs are really well done. They have like, put a lot of effort into them. So,、uh, what was it about Jinxy's costume that helped it to win? So,、uh, the first thing I want to say is we never imagined that our fans would choose two Judy designs, but they were just so good that, you know, like, it's a testament to how well both designs fit her character. So,、uh, this design is great. Probably because it really like, ties into her, her, her concepts and her story and everything like that. So, especially this one, like, Jinxie、uh, really, really, really links into the story. And that was something I'm really, really happy to see. So, you can see、uh, she's wearing M. Bison's hat in Seth's cloak. And I love the fact that, you know, she's got all of these pieces of hair on her. And she's also got, like, this bob haircut. And, you know, he thinks that, wow, that was, like, a really cute design for her. So it looks like both, both these designers, the artists, did a, a lot of effort to their designs. So moving on, what about Gar? What about, what about this made it the winner? <laughs> so this design was really liked by everybody among the development staff,、uh, especially Matsumoto. It matches the character's personality really well. I mean, she really looks like she'd wear this like, in real life. <laughs> She looks like, you know, like a local town delinquent, you know, who runs around in a bad crowd and starts fights. So,、uh, you know, actually, interesting thing about this contest, we received a large number of submissions with designs tied into Japanese culture.、Uh, this costume is also like a really, very specifically Japanese thing, right? Like,、uh, I wouldn't, you wouldn't really see something like this overseas, wouldn't you? <laughs> I mean, this isn't like a genre that you usually see that much overseas. But we hope that you know, people looking overseas look at this and go, oh man, that's this really cool little bit of、uh, Japanese culture. I mean, like, right now the image of Japan is like you know, kimonos and ninjas, but things like this、um, special kind of punk delinquent jacket is not something that's usually known. So it would be a good way to discover this bit of Japanese culture. Now, it's truly exciting to see these divines, how these designs get implemented. I hope everyone at home looks forward to it. So,、um, Yeah, so this all illustration contest was a really big success.、Uh, we wanted to thank everyone who chose to participate. So,、uh, one thing though, due to the issues with、uh, ratings and other companies' copyrights and so on,、uh, we have to be really careful with things. We have to tread carefully.、Uh, but the development team has expressed interest in holding another contest, so hopefully we'll get to do it again.
costume design contest. Oh, that would be really nice. Uh, let's keep our fingers crossed for a second costume contest. Let's hope that it happens. So, Mats Mr. Matsumoto, we talked about a lot of things, but I hear that after this, uh, we'll also be talking about Monster Hunter Rise and Monster Hunter Stories 2, uh, The Wings of Ruin. I'm sure that there are a lot of Monster Hunter fans watching us right now. And this is something I want to talk about, but I hear that there is a collaboration between Street Fighter V and Monster Hunter World. Right? Or there was one, right? Uh, yes, that's right. He's going to show up on the... You can see it right over here. So in addition to adding the song Proof of a Hero, um, we also have the collaboration um, consisting of Rathalos' armor for Ken, uh, the Gino, the Zen Ogre X armor for the Reimo Mika, the Kinin army for Ibuka, uh, Ibuki, and Blanca's Nergigante skin as extra costumes. You can see them over here. Um, we wanted to make sure that everybody knew that Blanca was going to be included in this. <laughs> so this is the definitely the Nergi Gigante. So normally you can get these costumes through extra battle mode. But if you buy the champion edition, you can use them right away. So definitely that's something uh, we, we hope you consider getting. So uh, remember, right now Street Fighter V Champion Edition really is a great bundle, so uh, take a look at it. So now we're going to move on to Street Fighter News, uh, the Street Fighter V News. So first up, we have information on the Street Fighter League that commenced on September 25th, that was yesterday. So the Street Fighter League Pro JP 2020, uh, Japan's top team league, which is being held in Street Fighter V Champion Edition, finally kicked off last night. Uh, we had some really amazing participants like uh, the legendary Daigo and uh, Tokido as well. Through them, you know, we uh, we came up with a dream team of other ferocious players who fought their way through a preliminary tournament to enter the league. There's uh, prestige and prize money were on the line for it. And if you want to watch more, you can catch the opening matches uh, coming in last night's first episode, as well as all future episodes every Friday night at 9 p.m. Japan time on Capcom's official channel. Uh, you'll definitely be able to find out more information on our official channel and our official website, so keep an eye out for that. <laughs> Yesterday was really fun. The fights were really intense. So yeah, if you're really curious, definitely take a look for it, Google it, and find out. So next, our last topic for the day is info on the limited edition collaboration watch uh, models being made with Seiko Watch's casual brand, the Seiko 5 Sports. So Japanese-made casual watch brand with, uh, so Seiko 5 Sports is a Japanese-made casual watch brand with mechanical movement. And we'll be selling a limited run of watches in collaboration with Street Fighter V starting on today, Saturday, September 26th. So, we're going to have a number of different model models available, including Liu, Chunni, Ken, Gaio, Blanca, and Zangief. So, six models all in will be available, and 9,999 of each will be available worldwide. So, don't miss out on getting one of these really awesome special pieces. You can see samples of them up on the screen. The Zangief one. Oh, he's got the Zangief one right now. That's like a really weird way you're holding that up on. <laughs> so I'm not doing this on purpose, it's the only way I can show it off, man. And the one he's got is Guile. Oh, there we go, there's a close up. He is. I guess, like, you know, the closer you look, the more details you can see. They really put a lot of effort into making that really look good. So they are on sale today, right? For more details on where to buy one in Japan, please consult the special site for the Seiko 5 Sports Street Fighter 5 Limited Edition Collaboration Model. Now, Oh, sorry, this is the last piece of information. So I bet people are wondering about the shirts that these two are wearing. These are on sale right now on the eCapcom shop. 
So this T-shirt that I'm wearing was designed by the. Uh, <laughs> it was really kind of like. Ah, uh, you can see the parka there as well. So uh, this was originally designed by the illustrator Bengasu, and it features Street Fighter V's characters around a total. 40 of them, I think. There's a lot of them. Now, next up is the Parker, sorry, the hoodie. It was also designed by Bengasu and is a limited edition to e Capcom only. So this is a unique design that features great line of work over a nice background. On the chest, you can see the joystick button. There it is. It's a pretty, um, like, you know, slim, thin uh, part of her hoodie, so it's really good to use year-round. If you want to find out more information, please make sure to check out e Capcom. Can I see? Can I see all these 40 characters? Show me where each and every one of them is. I can only see one. Oh, there we go. Ah, yeah. When you look close, you can see them really clearly. And they're really printed well. It came out very nice. So, you know, I can move around and you can, <laughs> you can stretch it. It'll probably be fine. You'll still be able to see everything. No problem. <laughs> so, everything discussed here today will also be uploaded to the official website. And the information is available on eCapcom. So, please don't forget to check it later. And just like that, it looks like we're about out of time. Before you go, could you give us a final message? Uh, can you give our viewers a final message, starting with Mr. Nakayama. So thank you for watching today. Street Fighter V is in its fifth year, but we're working hard to ensure that it'll be enjoyable for many more years to come. We hope that you'll continue to support it. Oh, and definitely, don't forget to look forward to Season 5. Thanks. Next up is you, Mr. Matsumoto. Thank you all for watching today. So, the development team is hard at work on the final season of Street Fighter V. So, uh, Director Nakayama and the rest of the team, we all deeply love uh, Street Fighter and are doing our best to make something absolutely spectacular. When I see the content being made on the uh, development floor, I can feel the love that everybody has for the series. Uh, please look forward to more news. So thank you, Mr. Matsumoto. So with that, our time here is up. That concludes our presentation on Street Fighter V Champion Edition. Our guests for the segment have been producer Shuhei Matsumoto and director Takayuki Nakayama. Thank you both for coming, and thank you.